Hello, my friends. Welcome to the Electric Viking. Fantastic to see you. Thank you for tuning into the channel. Great to have you on board, and I hope you've had an awesome day. Now, how much does it cost to replace the batteries in electric vehicles? Well, that's a good question. I'm going to get straight to the point here. This is actually a long answer. It's going to take me a while to answer it, but I'll give you an idea of what it costs to replace a Tesla battery. Tesla Model 3 Performance Battery costs in the United States on average around about 12,000 US dollars to replace if it needs to be replaced. However, obviously companies have warranties. The average warranty for a car is eight years and 160,000 kilometers. However, most manufacturers, excluding most of the German manufacturers, have a guarantee that the battery has to be at a minimum of 70% of its original capacity. Otherwise, they will replace it if it goes below the minimum of 70% before the eight years. So you're looking at eight years before you hit 70% of original capacity. That obviously is a way better warranty than you get on any ICE vehicle on the planet. I mean, think about it. Think about the actual comparison to this, right? The comparison would be you buy your vehicle, whatever it is, let's say I buy a Nissan Patrol. After eight years and 160,000 kilometers, Nissan has to guarantee me that the engine is still running at, well, 70% efficiency, that the parts are still in good, good condition, that everything's still running well. I mean, there is no guarantee on the market anywhere that the engine will be at a certain level of capacity of ability after eight years and 160,000 kilometers. So pretty good warranty. Now that warranty is a bit different depending on the model. We'll get to that in a second. Now the question of when to replace an EV battery and the cost involved is important, but not perhaps as important as the general public might think. So what is the likelihood of the battery needing replacement during the life of the car? And what is the cost of any potential battery replacement? Well, the driven IEO talks about this issue and says, will a battery need replacing during the life of the car? To answer this question, you need to explore two key issues. They are, number one, when will the battery no longer be fit for purpose? And number two, how long is the life of a car? Now, a good proportion of manufacturers guarantee their batteries for at least 70% capacity remaining after eight years. So for example, for a Hyundai Kona with 450 to 500 kilometers of range, that equates to a minimum range of 315 to 350 kilometers at eight years of age. That's warranted. If it goes below that 70%, then they have to put a new battery pack in. Now for many, if not most people, that means charging perhaps twice a week instead of once every week. The same for longer distance travel. Maybe an extra couple of recharge stops on the way between Sydney and Brisbane, for example, or between say San Francisco and Los Angeles. So who doesn't give the guarantee of 70% otherwise will replace the battery? Audi don't, BMW don't, Hyundai don't, Kia don't, Mercedes don't, and Mini don't. Who does give you the guarantee of 70%? Well, Jaguar do, MG do, yep, Chinese brand MG will give that to you, Nissan do, Porsche do, Renault do, and Tesla do. So that's one thing to think about when you purchase a car. I think that guarantee is pretty significant and probably worth something in terms of your perception of how much you want to pay for that car. It's also important to realize that the battery will not be dead at that eight year mark. It's just reduced in the driving range it can offer. Now, remember though, the smaller the battery pack, then that loss can be more of an issue. For example, early Nissan Leafs only had a 120 kilometer real world range. That means in the eight year warranty period, it could drop to 84 kilometers and not qualify for a warranty replacement. Now, there's no cars on the Australian market right now with that short of a range. But you see the point. If you bought a car with a 1,000 kilometer range, then if it dropped to 70%, you'd still have 700 kilometers of range. Keep in mind, ranges are increasing every year. Battery quality is increasing every year. More and more cars are coming with lithium ion phosphate batteries, which can charge. You probably find that you'd be able to drive a lithium ion phosphate powered car as long as it has thermal management for say 500 to a million kilometers before you start to see even 70% battery degradation. So now the oldest Nissan Leafs in Australia are 11 years of age and at that rate of decline, their range could have dropped to 70 kilometers, even lower in winter and or if using the heating or air conditioning system. 
And that's definitely replacement time if you use it more than a short commute to local shops. In fact, I would say at that point, you're better off just getting a new car. But from what I've seen from lots of research, most new cars are seeing only around about 2% battery degradation per year. So that would mean after having a car for 10 years, you would only see around about 20% battery degradation. So you'd still be at 80% of your original capacity, which is very good. However, that figure is improving and improving every year with new models. For evidence of this, a 2019 study by Geotab of around 6,000 EV owners found that EVs lose an average of 2.3% capacity annually and maintain high levels of sustained health over long periods of time. So you can imagine that that's in old cars. The newer cars with better thermal management are going to give you less than that. I reckon the average now would be probably 1.5%. That means, well, you're going to be you know, nearly 90% after 10 years. It's incredible. Now, the quote, the report, if the observed degradation rates are maintained, the vast majority of batteries will outlast the usable life of the vehicle, given that was an average. That included lots of very, very old, very early EVs. Using their online tool to isolate different models shows many later ones exhibiting significantly lower than average degradation rates or more like 1% on average. So what does this mean? Well, this means that most will find that batteries will last in a car for at least 15 to 20 years if they buy a car now or within the next few years. Obviously, that figure will get longer over time. Now, what is happening currently is people are using batteries in the car for, say, three, four, five hundred thousand kilometers, and then they're reusing them for a variety of different purposes. Could be for a caravan, could be for home energy storage, could be for lots of different uses. But you can see on eBay, Literally hundreds of thousands of battery cells from Tesla vehicles are being reused regularly. Now, in addition, that EV may then be relegated to the second car doing local trips as the previous ICE car finally fades away, the kids grow up, things change, life moves on. It's used for day-to-day driving, but it is likely that it will be some years past the eight-year warranty period before a car ever needs a new battery. In some cases, manufacturers will even still honor the over the eight year period, I've seen situations where people have had issues with their batteries and they've had them for longer than eight years and the manufacturers still replace them. One thing to consider as well is how long is the life of a car? Now, BYD says that its current batteries, blade batteries, will last for at least 1 million kilometers. How long do you expect that the electronics, suspension, steering, and the interior of an EV will last before you say, okay, the car has reached the end of its usable life. Now, given the average age of most car fleets in the Western world is about 10 years, 20 years seems like a reasonable guess. So it's reasonable, therefore, to say that an electric car may never actually need a battery replacement. In fact, it's very likely if you're buying an electric car now or in the future in some period, you'll never need to replace the battery. However, if it does, it will need no more than one battery replacement in its life Maybe you're using it as a taxi and you've driven 500,000 or more kilometers. But if that replacement is required, the earliest it would happen would be after 10 years of ownership. Now, obviously, after 10 years of ownership of many petrol cars if they've, or diesel cars, if they've been driven for, say, 500,000 kilometers, it's very rare to see engines do not need replacement after that point. What does an engine cost? Well, actually, probably a similar amount in many cars as what a battery pack does. So what is the cost? Well, in the early days of the Nissan Leaf, there were horror stories, this is coming from the Driven IO by the way, about fast battery declines and $30,000 plus battery replacement costs. These turned out to be unnecessary worries. Batteries that did decline faster than they should have were replaced for free within the eight year warranty period. Now that the eight year warranties have run out, we find that the cost of a replacement battery, battery fitted by a dealer, has thankfully reduced to around $10,000 for the 24 kilowatt hour battery. That's in Australia. So that's about 7,000 US dollars. Now, obviously you can compare that between different brands. Obviously the battery pack in the Tesla Model 3 Performance that I quoted before is more than twice the size. In fact, it's nearly three times the size of the Nissan Leaf battery pack. So actually the replacement cost for that Tesla battery is better value than the replacement cost that you get for that Nissan Leaf battery. But you can see it's fairly close to what it would cost for and car engine as well. Now, as failed battery packs were returned to the factory, it has been found that many of these packs had only a couple of faulty cells with the remainder being fine. There are actually companies that can fix that for you. 
So you may not need to replace the pack. It's possible sometimes that they can actually open the pack up and replace those faulty cells, meaning that there's nothing wrong with the pack. You, continue, you can continue to use it. Now, as a result, in countries with higher numbers of early Nissan Leaf sales, battery recycle schemes have begun with the disassembly and repackaging of cells into guaranteed remanufactured battery packs. In Japan, rebuilt packs for a Zio or Azio Leaf sell for around US $2,800, around Australian $4,000. You can actually get the same thing for BYD battery packs, by the way. So you can see this is starting to happen more and more with different vehicles across the industry. In addition, as these cars fall off the road due to accidents, a ready supply of secondhand batteries are becoming available to private businesses to experiment on. As a result, some have started offering aftermarket replacement, in some cases, upgraded battery packs. Now, the major cost component of an electric car, the battery has been falling in price in much the same precipitous way that solar panels fell in the early 2000s. In 2010, EV battery prices were up around US 1,100 per kilowatt hour, but have now fallen to US $137 per kilowatt hour. BYD's pack is 93 US dollars per kilowatt hour, and Tesla's, I believe, are around about 100 US dollars per kilowatt hour, depending on the chemistry. Now, it's predicted that the key number for BEV and ICE price parity to occur is US $100 per kilowatt hour. And in many cases, like I just mentioned, that's already happened. Now, people believe that would happen in 2024, but it's happened three years early, which is quite staggering. What this means to you is the prices of the pack will continue to decline. So it's predicted that the cost will decline to US $58 per kilowatt hour by 2030. But I believe this is ridiculous considering the cost decline we've seen over the past 10 years more likely it will decline to around about 40 US dollars per kilowatt hour. But even if we go on that 58 US dollars per kilowatt hour figure, that means that when the current range of EVs begin to need new batteries at a price of around US $4,000 or 5,400 Australian dollars, you will be able to get a 64 kilowatt hour Kona battery pack. Meaning that in most cases, it will actually be cheaper to get a new battery pack than an engine, than a new engine replacement. However, to return to the original statement here, it's unlikely you'll actually need to replace your battery by then anyway. So it may very well last for the useful life of the car, depending on which brand you buy. Personally, I think if you want a car with a battery pack that's gonna last a long time, the longest possible, get a lithium ion phosphate pack. Where can you get one of those? Tesla Model 3 has one, BYD vehicles have them. There's a number of different cars that have them. If you want to find out all the cars that have them, just subscribe to my channel and watch the videos and I'll tell you which ones they are. Now, Tesla, for instance, are suggesting that a 1 million mile battery, one that will last for a million miles, which is 1.6 million kilometers, is just about to come out. In fact, next year, the 4680 battery cell, BYD says the same, the lithium iron phosphate batteries, and there's a number of other manufacturers that are claiming similar numbers. So to sum up, EV batteries do not die every eight to 10 years. That is a myth and it's false. By 2030, new battery prices are likely to be comfortably under 10,000 Australian dollars or 7,000 US dollars for a large battery pack and perhaps around $5,000 for a reconditioned pack. However, keep in mind, you can actually get packs fixed. So depending on the model, that's also possible. And keep in mind that it's likely that an EV battery will never need to be replaced within the lifetime of the car before it's worth just chucking the rest of the car away and using that battery pack for other things. And that is the most likely scenario. In fact, the part of the car that people believe is the liability is in fact not now in 2021. It's actually the strength of the car. It's actually the one thing that you can use after the rest of the car has worn out for a multitude of other purposes. And that is already happening right now. In fact, one of the supporters of this channel has just used BYD's laid batteries from a bus. He's taken, the company have taken the, the batteries out of the bus because the bus has, has reached its usable life, sold the batteries to him, and he now uses those batteries for energy storage for his home. Now, how many kilometers has that bus done? I don't know, but it's certainly in the many, many hundreds of thousands. In addition to that, when electric cars uh, have used the end of their usable life or they're involved in a crash or, or they're written off or sometimes stolen, 
people then use the battery packs in conversions in converting ICE vehicles into electric cars. And that's becoming a more and more popular thing to do these days. It could be a pastime that becomes more popular in the future with people wanting to restore old vehicles and then turn them into electric vehicles. Keep in mind, there is a distinct possibility that improvements in battery technology will result in replacement batteries being significant upgrades as well. Now you can do this in your Neo, for example. It has already been established that the battery in the current BMW i3, being the same physical size as the first model, can be retrofitted to the earlier car, giving substantially greater range. That's another option. Want to increase the range of your car? Buy this pack and we'll swap it out. You can sell your old pack and you can use this new pack and all of a sudden you've got a car that is way better. The future of the car is truly exciting and it's really such positive news what's happening in the electric car world. Thanks for watching the channel. Make sure you subscribe and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.